Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection September 13, 2021 Monday Memorial of St. John Chrysostom, Bishop and Doctor of the Church The Monday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Memorial of St. John Chrysostom, Bishop and Doctor of the Church John Chrysostom was the son of a Latin father and a Greek mother. His mother, Anthusa, was widowed at the age of 20, soon after his birth. Putting aside all thought of remarriage, Anthusa gave all of her attention to her son she gave him the best classical education of the day, and enrolled him as a catechumen when he was 18. He came under the influence of Meletius, Patriarch of Antioch, who sent him to the monastic school of Diodor, then baptized him and ordained him lector. At this time, St. John Chrysostom decided to take his future into his own hands and became a monk hermit, living in a cave, studying the scriptures, and putting himself under the discipline of an old hermit named Hesychius. However, his health broke under this austere regimen and he returned to Antioch, was ordained a priest, and began his remarkable career as a preacher. During the next 12 years, he electrified Antioch with his fiery sermons, filled with a knowledge and an eloquence that were astonishing. It was during this period that he received the nickname Chrysostom, or Golden Mouth, for his words seemed to be pure gold. In 397, when the See of Constantinople became vacant, the Emperor Arcadius appointed John Patriarch, and since it was feared that he would refuse the honor, he was lured to Constantinople and consecrated bishop of the city in 398. John found himself in a nest of political intrigue, fraud, extravagance, and naked ambition. He curbed expenses, gave lavishly to the poor, built hospitals, reformed the clergy, and restored monastic discipline. But his program of reform made him enemies. In particular the Empress Eudoxia and the Patriarch Theophilus of Alexandria. The city in turmoil, his life threatened, John was exiled by the Emperor in the year 404. First Reading A reading from the first letter to Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 8. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle I am speaking the truth, I am not lying, teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands, without anger or argument. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 28 verse 2 7 and 8 to 9. Let our response be, Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Hear the sound of my pleading, when I cry to you, lifting up my hands toward your holy shrine. Response, Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and in my heart trusts, and I find help. Then my heart exalts, and with my song I give him thanks. Response. 
Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is the strength of his people, the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people, and bless your inheritance. Feed them, and carry them forever. Response. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Alleluia. John chapter 3 verse 16. Alleluia, Alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 7 verse 1 to 10. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die, and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, Go, and he goes. And to another, Come here, and he comes and to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this he was amazed at him and, turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, Please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel The figure of the centurion becomes the example for all those who want to abide by the faith of Israel and then encounter and know the face of the Father in Jesus. In the meditation on this gospel, we are also proposed to open ourselves to faith or to make our confidence in the word of the Lord more firmly unshaken. Let us try, then, to follow, with our hearts, the example of this Roman centurion, so that in him we may also be present. Try to hear more attentively the words that try to give light to this reality. Capernaum, a border city, a city apart, on the margins, a city where the blessings of God seem slow to arrive. The grave illness, the imminent death of a dear person. But we soon see that the Lord enters into this situation, coming to share in it, to live in it with his loving presence. The words in italics confirm this truth asking him to come. And Jesus went with them. He was only a short distance. It is wonderful to see this movement of Jesus who moves near to and who calls him, who searches for him and who asks for salvation. This is how Jesus acts with each one of us. But it is also very useful to enter into contact with the figure of the centurion, who is here a bit like our master, our guide on the way of faith. When he heard about Jesus, he received the announcement. He heard the good news and held it in his heart. He did not let it escape and did not close his ears to life. He remembered Jesus and now he goes in search for him. He sent. Twice does the centurion carry out his action. First sending the elders of the people to Jesus. Authoritative figures, then by sending his friends. Luke uses two different verbs and this helps us to understand better that in this man something took place. A state of passage. He became more and more open to the encounter with Jesus. 
sending his friends is a bit like going to Jesus himself. Two beautiful verbs that explain the whole intensity of his request to Jesus. He wants Jesus to come, to be near, to enter into his poor life, to come and visit his pain. It is a declaration of love, of great faith, because it is as if he was saying, without you, I cannot live anymore. Come. And he does not ask for any mere salvation, a superficial healing, as the particular verb chosen by Luke helps us to understand. In fact, here it is a traverse salvation, one that crosses the entirety of life, of the entire person, and is capable of taking a person beyond, past every obstacle, every difficulty or trial, beyond even death. I am not worthy. Luke puts these words in the mouth of the centurion twice, and these words help us to understand the great transformation that has taken place within himself. He feels unworthy, incapable, insufficient, as the two different Greek terms used here indicate. Perhaps the first conquest on the road of faith with Jesus is exactly this, the discovery of our great need for him, for his presence and the more certain knowledge that alone we can do nothing because we are poor. We are sinners. However, precisely because of this we are infinitely loved. Say the word. Here is the great leap, the great transformation in faith. The centurion now believes in a clear, serene and faithful way. While Jesus walked towards him, he was also completing his own interior journey, changing, becoming a new man. First, he welcomed the person of Jesus, then his word, for him it is the Lord as he is. His word is efficacious, true, powerful, able to do what he says. All of his doubts have crumbled. Nothing remains but faith, the certain confidence in salvation, in Jesus. Does my prayer feel like that of the centurion, addressed to Jesus to come and save? Am I also ready to explain to the Lord my uneasiness, my need for him? Am I perhaps ashamed to present to him the sickness? the death that lives in my house, in my life? What do I need in order to fulfill this first step in trust? And if I open my heart in prayer, to the invocation, if I invite the Lord to come, what is the profound attitude of my heart? Is there also in me, as in the centurion, the knowledge of being unworthy, of not being sufficient solely of myself, of not being pretentious? Do I know how to place myself before the Lord with that humility that comes from love, from serene trust in Him? Is His Word good enough for me? Do I ever listen to it in its entirety with attention, with respect, even though, perhaps, I am not able to fully understand it? And in this moment, what is the word that I want to hear from the mouth of the Lord for me? What do I want Him to say to me? The pagan centurion had such a great faith and I, who am Christian, what faith do I have? Perhaps it is true that I must pray like this. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Your words are a lamp for my steps, Lord. How can a youth keep his way pure? By observing your word. With all my heart I search for you. Do not let me deviate from your commands. Put again into my heart your promise that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my mouth I recount all of the wisdom from your mouth. On the way of your teachings is my joy. More than all other riches. I want to meditate on your precepts. To consider your ways. In your decrees is my delight. I will not forget your word.